All right, welcome to the FA40 podcast. I am your host, Josh Proach. And today, what we're going to talk about is uh, we're going to talk about cardio a little bit more, but um, also kind of changing the way that you think about cardio and what cardio is um, and things like that. So last week, we I talked to you guys about um, cardio and heart health and, and things like that. So I just want to build off of this topic while we're, we're on it here for a little bit. So when it comes to fat loss, you know, if you ask somebody, what do you think is more effective, cardio or strength training? Most of them, most people are going to guess cardio, but unfortunately, that would be the wrong answer. Um, and it's not that necessarily cardio is bad or can't help in that. Um, it's just not the most effective way. And strength training is more effective, um, especially if um, the majority of your workout routines have been cardio based in the past. And this is because over time, your body will adapt um, pretty easily to cardio. So that means that you'll burn less calories in each workout um, over time, even though you might be doing the same length or distance. And the only way to offset that would be by going faster, longer, further, um, all of which will have their limitations. You know, you can only run so fast, you can only run so long, um, and things like that, um, or, or for such a dis so, so far, um, you know, with, without, uh, you know, running, getting tired, run out of time, you know, whatever. Um, but with strength training, it's just a lot harder for our bodies to adapt to the workout because there's just a lot more variables that can be changed. We can change, you know, sets, reps, add more weight, you, you know, using progressive overload, things like that. We can change the exercises slightly so that they're hitting the body a little bit differently. We just, we have a lot of little ways that we can tweak things to make it um, just a little bit more challenging and harder for your body to adapt to. Um, also, with when we look at high amounts of cardio, our body over time will get weaker due to a natural loss of muscle tissue that comes with high cardio, and that'll end up slowing the metabolism down, which will make weight loss even harder. And um, you know, a lot of people will ask, well, like, oh, I'm losing muscle tissue with with cardio or things like that, or why does that happen? And um, I'm going to get to that here in a little in a little bit but basically it starts using that as an energy source to to burn that off um and then the other question we when we're talking with people about switching up from doing as much cardio as they've been to doing uh, more strength training we get asked a lot like well if i do that isn't my endurance going to go down and what about my heart health and things like that um if the strength training program is put together right, we're still able to build and maintain endurance and keep our heart healthy. And we actually start building better work capacity, um, which we're going to talk about um, probably next week in the podcast. And basically explaining how, how this can be done, we need to look at what cardio actually is or an explanation of what cardio is cardio actually is. So I just looked real up real quick here um, before we got on the podcast, just the definition of cardio in um, the dictionary. So we use the Merriam-Webster's dictionary. And basically, cardio is any type of exercise that causes the heart to beat faster and harder for a period of time. So when we look at that, the two words or the two phrases that we're going to um, focus on are harder and faster um, for a period of time. And this is where when we look at cardio and we looked at exercise and everything, it's gotten a little bit skewed. So our, our mindset is that more is better. Um, and what's happened is we've started pushing cardio so past its beneficial limits um, in a lot of cases. So it, technically, any activity that will increase our heart rate, um, whether it's 10 seconds or a minute, 30 seconds, what, you know, whatever, um, quick sprint up the steps, you know, that that's cardio, um, you know, getting up from your chair and running to the bathroom because you got a pee roll bad, you know, that's cardio and, you know, doing a set of squats, that's cardio, especially if the weight's hot, heavy, that's cardio. So it's really anything that's getting our heart rate up. Um, so this is where when we start putting programs together, we're able to still improve on that cardio endurance um, and, and, and uh, keeping the heart healthy and, and things that way because we're still getting cardio in there. Um, like I said, we're actually building work capacity because we are now using the muscular system to move loads over a period of time. 
Um, so it really doesn't matter how long you exercise. It's more important what you're doing in that exercise. Um, so the quality here is definitely much better than the quantity um, or the duration of, of the workout. So when we look at traditional cardio, you're gonna, you need hours really to burn significant calories. And the reason this is, is there's a very small window of the afterburn effect. So the afterburn effect is where the um, metabolism is, is elevated. So um, the, you know, we can get this from a strength training, um, you know, where it's going to be 36, 48 hours uh, post-workout, our body will be burning calories at an increased rate. But with cardio, this doesn't really happen. Um, the calories we burn inside that workout, that, that's pretty much it. There's not a very large afterburn effect from there. Um, so, you know, with cardio, it might, you might burn 500 calories in your workout, and then when you stop, your metabolism is going to go back to its normal state. But when we look at strength training and interval training and things like that, your body's going to keep burning calories for many hours afterwards. So you may not burn quite as many in the workout as you do with um, regular cardio, but you're going to burn a lot more outside the workout. So you end up with a higher calorie burn um, over a period of you know, 36, 48 hours, even up to 72 hours there. And this was first seen all the way back in 1994 by um, Angelo Tremblay. And um, he had a kind of the groundbreaking study on this. Um, it, it was titled The Impact of Exercise Intensity on Body Fatness and uh, Skeletal Muscle Metabolism. But uh, what he found is he looked at um, endurance training versus interval training. And what he found there was that the endurance group uh, burned nearly twice the amount of calories as the interval group. Um, but the interval group lost nine times more body fat. And they were doing a very hard to bat a protocol um, in that. So it's about a four minute workout versus the ones going for an hour. And they, they still lost, um, about, like I said, about nine times more body fat. So I'm not going to go into that study completely in detail because there was a lot of um, intricacies with it and, and things like that. But it started showing us that the type of exercise we're doing does affect the calorie burn and even though the calorie burn in those four minutes was much, much lower than what was in the, you know, when they were doing the cardio for an hour, it's, uh, the, that afterburn window just really, things were ramped up there. So, you know, the big thing is, um, less work sometimes in the workout, if it's the right work, like and right activity like strength training, interval training, things like that. It'll have less calories burned during a workout, but we'll get a leaner body. And the way that's possible is, again, going back to that afterburn effect, which is going to increase the number of calories burned uh, post-workout all the way up to about 72 hours. That's still going to be running at an elevated rate there. Um, but it's also due um, to two other factors. Um, the energy system that's used in your body and there's also the uh, what's called the compensation effect so your body has um, two different energy systems primarily um, these can get broken down into some smaller subsets as well too but we're just going to look at two, the we're just going to keep it simple and um, that that burn that we can burn energy from but they burn calories much differently so the first one is our aerobic system and this is basically cardio. It's why aerobics was called that and things like that. And it basically burns calories through the use of oxygen in the body to create energy. The second one is the anaerobic system. And this uses anaerobic exercise, which is things like strength training, um, interval training, short bursts kind of stuff, where it's using stored muscle glycogen to um, create energy. And the difference between these two is that um, the anaerobic system will burn calories at a ratio of like 5 to 1 or even 7 to 1 over aerobic exercise. Um, this, I'm going to say the research is newer on this. It's been out probably 10 years now that people have been looking at this, but they've been digging into it more and more because it's a little bit harder to measure the anaerobic burn than is the aerobic burn. Um, the majority of the, the thing, the, like Fitbits, the, all the trackers, um, things like that, they're all set on the aerobic model 
Um, some of them are starting to make some adjustments for the for anaerobic exercise, but they're still not very accurate. Um, in in the deeper research, they're finding that whatever um, an, an anaerobic exercise or an anaerobic activity is burning on an aerobic scale, the actual calorie burn um, when adjusted is like five to one or seven to one. So um, the second thing I talked about here was the compensation um, effect. And what this is, is basically with long extended periods of cardio or really any type of um, exercise that kind of goes past like that 50 minute mark, which is why we keep our workouts around 50 minutes or so there, your body starts to signal a hormonal response um, that makes you significantly more hungry. Um, But especially um, increasing cravings for carbohydrates um, which will result in you eating more, um, which then will be storing more fat for energy um, to get through the next workout. So the body is now taking that food and saying, hey, I got my ass kicked so hard in this workout or I drained so much reserves. Now I need to eat a lot more and I'm going to store this. So this is what why we're kind of seeing a move away from the boot camp stuff um, because one of the reasons is because what it does is it just it makes your body hungry and it's actually if you're pushing yourself too hard you can actually train your body to store more energy up for for workouts and that can be counterproductive um, especially when we're trying to lose fat Um, now when we get on the more extreme ends of fitness and the very lower body fat percentages things this stuff does change a little bit But uh, for the general population, we don't necessarily want that super high intensity the whole whole workout. Um, So the last thing I'm going to talk about here too, which I started to before, was um, how we can burn muscle tissue off through through cardio and actually get get weaker and slow the metabolism. So any time that we have we're doing high amounts of cardio we end up seeing um, muscle wasting happen. And when the muscle wastes or we body loses muscle tissue, that's going to slow the metabolism. But also because uh, the cardio is using the um, is using oxygen and it's basically creating oxidation or oxidative stress on the body. And we all know, like you've probably heard of oxidation and it's never really a good thing. Um, and this is this isn't necessarily a good thing in in the body when we have high amounts of it, you know, small amounts and things like that are fine. So your body's burning oxygen as a primary fuel leading to this oxidative stress, um, which basically is the inability of your body to detoxify the reactive intermediates that are in the body. So this is all the breakdown and all this other kind of like garbage that that's in the body. Your body's not able to detoxify and get rid of this. Um, so when your body can't keep up with that detoxification, this is where we get into free radical damage and that's where that begins to happen. So this is, this is how high amounts of cardio can actually age the body. It can lead to injury. It can weaken the immune system. Um, it can lead to tissue breakdowns, different things like that, like with, with joint tissues, things like that. Um, and the the last part of this is all of this oxidative stress is going to lead to excess cortisol in the body, which again will lead to muscle loss. It leads to fat storage and um, an increased um, incident for um, chronic disease. And most of the general population, a lot of people that we see working, they're they're under higher stress. They have higher cortisol levels, so we don't want the we don't want to increase cortisol levels a whole lot more in their bodies because they're already in this um at high in a high cortisol state so we want those pulled down and with cardio uh with strength training the cortisol levels don't get um increased or don't rise as high as they do with um high amounts of cardio um but this doesn't mean that you have to give up cardio completely um i don't want people getting the the assumption that we're like against it or we're bashing it or anything basically i'm just trying to explain how things work how the body works and and things like that it's so we like cardio but we don't necessarily think that everyone needs to be running or doing super high amounts of it things like that we're big fans of getting out and walking um i always say at least 30 minutes if you can get an hour that's even better um most days and you know 
if you're getting two to three strength workouts per week and then you're doing some other cardio, if you like running, go run, you know, but make sure you're getting those two to three strength workouts. If your body's feeling good, you know, with that and, and still feels good running, then that's fine. You're, you're doing okay with that. But um, we just don't want to see people doing only cardio. That's the main thing. So, um, and if you guys are short on time, which we know that's, you know, a big issue for a lot of people. And if you can only get, you know, one, two, maybe three workouts in a week, um, definitely if it's only one or two, make them strength training. Your body, you'll get more out of that. Um, your body will reward you more for that. So, that's all I have for you guys today. Um, if you have any questions, I know this was a little bit more of a complex topic today, but if you guys have any questions, um, just shoot me an email. Um, it's Josh at Pittsburgh North Fitness. You can put some notes in the comments, anything like that. Um, I'll be glad to answer them and you know talk to you more about that. So have a great day. Thank you for listening to this episode. If you enjoyed it, be sure to subscribe to our podcast on Apple Podcasts and rate and review us.